there's a, a theory within at least the spiritual community or like spiritual thoughts that time is speeding up. Is there any way that's possible? Well, I can talk directly from the physics of, of the yeah. situation. And I would say there is resonance in that time is much more fluid than we would think based on everyday experience, right? Mm -hmm. Everyday experience seems to suggest that your watch and my watch and everybody's watch, if it's a properly functioning watch, they're all ticking to off time at the same rate. That's sort of all there is to it. And from a practical standpoint, that's pretty much true, which is why it's what we experience. But from a physics standpoint, it's absolutely not true. Because mm -hmm. as I made reference to before, if you and I are moving relative to each other, our watches are not ticking off time at the same rate. Mm -hmm. um, if I go to the top of a tall building, even on planet Earth, my watch will be ticking off time a little bit more quickly than clocks that are down on the surface because I'm experiencing less gravity. And the less gravity you experience, the more quickly your clock will tick compared to a clock that's experiencing more mm -hmm. gravity. So in that sense, time speeds up, it slows down depending upon the gravity you experience and the speed with which you are moving. But on planet Earth, most of us are pretty much moving at the same speed. Yeah. The only yeah. speed that matters in this context is the speed of light. Light travels so quickly that it's well beyond any experience. It goes 300 million meters per second. It can go around the entire Earth more than seven times in one second. Seven times around the Earth in one second. Now, if you can achieve those speeds, then the difference in your watch and my watch would become manifest. We would see, we would measure the difference between those. Yeah. But on planet Earth, how fast do you go? 100 miles an hour? You know, 240 200. miles an hour? Like, do, did I age more or less going yeah. 240 miles an hour? That's right. It's so it's so tiny. We're talking in the billionths and the trillionths of a second difference right. that it's irrelevant from yeah. a practical standpoint. So from a practical perspective, no, time is not speeding up. It's not slowing down. It is the same for all of us on planet Earth. From a cosmic, and I don't mean like new agey cosmic, I mean from the cosmic perspective of how time mm -hmm. behaves in the universe, there is no universal clock. There is no one time that we are all tethered to. Clocks tick off time depending on how they move and the gravity they experience. You do you do remember an interstellar? Yeah, I do. I love this. My favorite movie. Oh, good. So do you remember when um, the uh, Matthew McConaughey and, and the other um, uh, actor, I can't remember her name, Sorry, apologies. Anne Hathaway. Yeah, Anne Hathaway, exactly. So they, they go down to that planet? They go down that planet, right? And and their other uh, companion back on the ship, I forget his yep. name. Yep. When they return, they were down there for like four hours, and he's aged 23 years. Yes. Okay. This is how science actually works. That was not Hollywood nonsense. If you go near a black hole, the gravity is powerful. That slows the ticking of time on your watch compared to the watch that's on the ship far away from the black hole. And so a few hours for you on that planet near the black hole would be something like 23 years for someone back on the ship. There you have time speeding up, slowing down right there. And that that's accurate. Yeah. So that is, it, it's real. It's just so minuscule here, but it's yeah. real. It's just, and this is how numbers, this is how scientists and physicists are able to make calculations is that you look at the small to get the big, right? And exactly. That was, that was the power of Einstein. You put your finger right on it. He would see a little crack in the mathematics that wouldn't be relevant for experience here on planet earth, but he would push the mathematics forward and reveal what that crack in our understanding would mean for mm -hmm. the entirety of the cosmos. And indeed, he was the one that found that time ticks off at different rates, depending on the gravitational field. Mm. So is time dimension that exists in the entire universe? I think so. I think that's a reasonable way of putting it. It perhaps is less mysterious than it might sound. I mean, when we talk about dimension, it's usually the data necessary to specify where or when something takes place. So, you know, for us to have our conversation, I got a little email saying, you know, it's going to be whatever, 11 o'clock on whatever is today, Tuesday or something. Is it, you know, 11 o'clock on Tuesday and I needed to be, you know, at my desk to do that. Right. 
So what are the data? You need to give me some spatial data, right? I need it to be, you know, here. We also needed to give a temporal piece of data. And that was the time. And yeah. so three pieces of data delineate where you are in space. One piece of data tells you where you are in time. So that's why we say four dimensions, not anything sort of more mysterious than that. And that's relevant for events that are taking place throughout the entirety of the universe. If you want to specify them, you have to say where they take place, like an X, Y, and Z coordinate, a street, an avenue, and a floor number. And then you also have to say when they take place. There's your temporal dimension, four pieces of data to specify events. Mm. So what are what are the dimensions beyond that? And how many dimensions are we, are we, how many dimensions can we prove? I don't know. So there may not be any beyond that. That's the most flat-footed, straightforward interpretation of, of hmm. the data. But if you ask somebody like me, who spent decades investigating the extra dimensional possibility, yeah. there is interesting reasons from the math for taking the idea of other dimensions, at least seriously. We have not seen any evidence i just need to be straight out about that for these extra dimensions but you know for the past 35 years i've been investigating theories that suggest that there are more dimensions of space than the three that we know about and why where does this come from well we've been trying to push forward to realize a dream articulated initially by einstein of having what's called the unified theory one mathematical theory that would describe the big things in the universe, the small things and everything in between. And that's quite a challenge. Einstein himself never found this unified theory. But in the last few decades, we think we might, and again, I need to underscore, there is uncertainty here. We think we might have that theory. And within that theory, when we study the math, it says that the three dimensions of space that we know about are not the only ones. It says that there are at least six, probably seven, depending on how you formulate it, extra dimensions of space that we've never seen. But six or seven the, beyond the four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A grand yeah. total of 11, if you, yep. if you want to frame yep. it in that way. And we have ideas regarding why we've not seen these extra dimensions. One possibility is they're, they're not big, like the dimensions that we see around us. They may be tightly curled up into a very small shape and they would be all around us, but just too tiny for us to easily see. You know, I can mm -hmm. give you, a, you know, I don't know if I can say, yeah, look at this. So yeah. look at this, this little wire, right? Yeah. Now from far away, you wouldn't be easy to see the thickness. You'd only see the length of the sure. wire. Sure. But now as I get closer and closer, it becomes easier and easier for you to see that there's an extra dimension, a curled up circular dimension that goes around the wire. It doesn't just have length. It also has this circular part, a curled up dimension. Imagine mm -hmm. that circular part was incredibly tiny. Atomic scale. Then you wouldn't be able to see it with a naked eye at all. Mm -hmm. And all it would look like is one line from my left hand to my right hand. But if you mm -hmm. zoom in, then the circular dimension becomes more apparent. We think that might be true of the universe. This obvious dimension would be like left, right, back, forth, up, down. Three dimensions, easy to see. The curled up part might be like those other seven dimensions that are harder to see. They're all around us, but so tiny that the naked eye or even powerful equipment that we currently have can't access them. What are we thinking or what are you guys thinking is in the dimensions? Well, everything that you know about, in a sense, would be there because everything fundamentally we learn from quantum physics is vibrating fields, vibrating fields of energy, the electron field, the quark fields. Gravitation is described by a field. And these fields can penetrate these extra dimensions, if they have adequate energy, if they're strong enough, the fields are strong enough. So in principle, anything can can probe into those extra dimensions. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of the amount of energy that the, the probe has. The universe is expanding, correct? That's And it's expanding faster and faster. Yes. But entropy is another fundamental truth in the universe, correct? Like, yes. 
everything is essentially leading towards ent entropy, but yet it's the universe is growing at an exponential rate. So how does that, how, how do you rectify that? Or do those even, do those even go together as a thought of how does that happen? They do. It's a very intricate dance between the entropy of the cosmos and the size and the expansion of the cosmos. At some level, you can imagine that there is nice resonance because if you think about entropy as disorder, you'd say to yourself, well, if a system is bigger, it has greater capacity to be disordered, right? I mean, if you have a one bedroom apartment, there's just so much disorder there can be. But now if you've got 10 bedrooms, you could have disorder in all of them. You could have more disorder because you've got more space. And so you might say the expanding universe is compatible with an increase in entropy because now there's more space to house the increasing disorder. And there's some there's some truth to it of that way of thinking. It's not the full story, but certainly part of the story. But the interesting thing with the accelerated expansion is that in a way that would be a little hard for me to explain fully, but I'll just give the basic idea. Because the universe is expanding at faster than the speed of light, that's a crazy idea, but it yeah. is. <laughs> it means that there are places out there beyond which we can't see. Because if once the expansion goes faster than the speed of light, the light can't reach us. Right. <laughs> so in a sense, we are surrounded by a sphere that we can't see beyond. And that sphere, in some sense, has entropy. And that entropy in that sphere is generating some heat within our universe. So when you think about the far future of the universe and what its entropy will be like, that's the situation that you wind up analyzing. Imagining that we are surrounded by a large sphere that's coming from the accelerated expansion. And that sphere itself has a temperature. And that temperature controls the final entropy of the cosmos. If you like this clip and you want to hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.